Well, you had some time to reflect on uh, the Los Angeles um, defeat. Damien suggested it's a game you might want to forget, but you probably will dissect it a little bit more. What are your thoughts looking back? Uh, in the end, yes, it'll be a game we want to forget, but uh, prior to that, we will, we've talked about it as a group. We'll look at a lot of things. Um, the short of, short of it is we just flat out weren't good enough. We, uh, we were disjointed in a lot of ways and uh, as a collective group, and then we had a lot of uh, subpar performances in general, but as, just as a group, we were, we, were not, we were not connected both defensively and offensively. And so you go there and you play at their field and their stadium. They're a good team. Uh, they open you up, and if you make mistakes, they kill you. And we, we did uh, too many of all of the above, and, uh, and we paid for it. Um, and so in order to move forward, I think you always have to address some of the issues that maybe that showed up on the field. Um, but then, yes, we want to put it behind us and, uh, and start to concentrate on getting, getting a result in the performance in New York. Is part of that that you were just trying to knit together a lineup with a lot of changes? Yeah, definitely in terms of the collective aspect of it. There was, you could tell there was some misreading, some miscommunication, some, some partnerships that were normally very good for us prior in terms of positions that weren't as strong uh, just because guys were not used to um, having the repetitions together and playing together and seeing the scenarios and dealing with them. So for sure, some of the collective stuff was, uh, was a product of just such turnover, I think, uh, in, the, in the team. Um, and then it's, you know, we make an early mistake, we give away an early goal. I think it, as we've always talked about, goals change games, they change mentality just a little bit. Then I think we, we got a little bit stretched out and opened up because maybe we feel like we have to go and get that goal back. And then we got, we got really stretched out on a big field and they started to have a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities playing between us. Um, and we just collectively did not pull ourselves back together quick enough to, to deal with it. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll move forward and uh, we'll make decisions on, on how we want to address that uh, for the weekend. How do you think uh, Jay did in his uh, starting debut? Um, I, I mean, I thought he did okay. It was, uh, it's one of those games where when the entire team doesn't have a great day, it's difficult on one player who's getting his first start to, to really assess him. Uh, you know, he had some things that he definitely he did well that, that we've seen him do before, and he had some moments that, um, that he needs to get better at, right? But uh, to isolate Jay, um, I would say it was more of a collective issue uh, where just as a group we weren't good enough, and each individual you could, I could go through and nitpick them really for the, for the day. Do you anticipate making lineup changes then for this weekend? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look at it over the course of this week and just see how everybody progresses. The good news is we have an extra day of preparation with the Sunday. Um, we'll use that to our advantage. We'll see as guys keep progressing in terms of fitness and health. Uh, obviously, Luke's back, and uh, we get our, a little more of our group back again as we progress. So we'll assess everything and, and look at our approach for the weekend. But You, you played in a, a big field at uh, StubHub, mm -hmm. but now how would you describe the field you're going to play this weekend? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been interesting because we've been talking about that for a couple of weeks, how we go from essentially the biggest field in the league to now the smallest field in the league. And uh, last week was a, a lot of discussion on how we wanted to manage the space on the field, which we didn't do a great job of. And, and this week is going to be how do you create some space on the field and how do, you, uh, how do you also continue to limit the space for the opposition, which is done by the small field, but how do we find space and find ways to play on it? So a little different, uh, a little bit different approach or dilemma, um, but we're, we're prepared to set forth on our, our mission for the week on how we want to go about it. There seemed a fair bit of argy-bargy last time you played New York FC. Do you anticipate a, a similar physical battle from them or physical approach? Yeah, I would think so. I think they're going to be uh, highly motivated. They're obviously introducing at least a couple players into their lineup this week or into their team. Uh, the big announcement, I suppose, with Pirlo is to go with that. I don't know if he'll be available or not. Doesn't it's not really of any concern of us right now. Um, but they have a lot of a lot of hoopla going around. I think they will they'll come out and, and be motivated and guns a blazing. And, and I would think that we should shouldn't expect anything less than a, a physical and heated affair. Have you ever played against uh, Frank before? Uh, I have not. I played against uh, England once, but he was not in the in the team on that particular game. What do you think about him coming to MLS? How do I mean? And in this game specifically, I mean, this is going to be his debut. How do you go about neutralizing him? Do you think? I mean, I think he's a, I think he's a very good player. Obviously, it doesn't nobody needs me to say that. Um, but I think he's, 
uh, he'll be interesting for, for the league, and I don't know exactly how they intend to use him uh, based on, on their lineup and, and their positions that they, they utilize. But he's a player who, who can create things. He arrives into the box late. He's a goal scorer, but he's also uh, a guy who can set up, uh, set up actions for them. So, I mean, obviously he's a guy we need to be aware of, but without having seen him in this league, it's tough to say how he'll immediately adapt to the league. I think that's always, that's always a challenge for players who come from, uh, from international leagues is how, those, how that initial sort of translation into MLS, what that looks like. So, um, so we'll see. I mean, for us, again, it's going to be about dealing with collectively being better than we were last week and uh, closing down spaces and, and making, uh, making the game more difficult for the opposition than we did for LA. Greg, it seems... Uh Perhaps I'm wrong. It seems your best right back is your left back right now. Uh, does that concern you? I mean, it was working when you had Ashton, but uh, does it concern you? You have. It doesn't seem like you've found uh, the fit for your back four yet. Yeah, well, we've had a we've had a hard time when uh, obviously when Justin and, and Ash are in there, it's uh, it's been pretty clear, and both of them have been very good. And Justin's proven that he's he's actually quite comfortable on the right side. Um, but when we go after after we lose one of those guys and say we slide Justin to the left it's been about who who fills that role um, you know Warren is is learning the position and every time we put him out you can tell he's still learning the position uh, and Bloomy hasn't been quite ready just yet and uh, so and that way we we're we're always looking at uh, the solutions and trying to train guys and bring them along as quickly as we can so um, you know this weekend we'll, we'll see how it goes and we'll, we'll make our decisions based on how we prepare for the week and Who's ready to go? How are uh, Bloomy and Caldwell coming? Uh, Bloomy is doing well. He he was obviously in the 18. Um, if we really needed to throw him out there, he would have been fine. Um, but given the way the game had gone, that we decided let's give him another week to continue to to progress in his strength and get another week of training sessions in. Uh, last couple times we've. Uh, look to bring him back. He he had little aggravations that that set him back. So this week we said, uh, let's if the game is the way it is, then let's give him another week to continue. So he'll he'll be training with us this week, and we'll see uh, see how close he is come to the weekend. And Stephen, what's his uh, situation? Uh, Stephen is was back into rain, uh, training over the weekend, and he was uh, he worked out a little bit with uh, TFC two just to get his legs under him. And uh, we'll have to assess today. He had off, and we'll assess where that where that goes uh, next. Is there a possibility for Saturday or, or Sunday? Or I no? think it would be a stretch for this week. He he uh, he needs to get some some real training under his belt to see how he responds and how the calf reacts. Uh, the team has been able to bounce back from losses like this weekend all season. Uh, what is it about the team that makes it so you haven't really had any losing streaks since the start of the year? Um, well, I think it's it's a team that has some pride first and foremost. I think this past weekend we just we just weren't competitive enough, and I think we should all come away a little bit embarrassed about uh, how we did. So that should hurt a little bit. Um, but other than that, we have we have an identity. We're we're pretty clear on what we're supposed to be doing, uh, and we just need to get back to work this week and prepare for for the weekend and have a have a good preparation, a good plan, and everybody needs to understand what their role is and and step up and compete. You know, and that's uh, it's something we've talked about is we don't want ever to to lose two games in a row. We want to when it's one, okay, it happened once, and let's get going and get the momentum back on our side. So that's it's always a part of the topic of discussion, really. Greg, the hairdryer treatment doesn't really seem your style, but after a game like uh, the one in L.A., I mean, do you do you have harsh words with the team, or is it such a performance that they know they were not very good? I I, uh, I always believe that I'm honest with the group, uh, so um, I tell them exactly what I think of the performance. Um, I don't mince my words and what I think uh, our performance was. Um, I use sometimes emotion and sometimes I don't use emotion in terms of how I, uh, in terms of yelling or not yelling, but uh, I believe I'm very honest with them in terms of, of the performance and whether it was good enough or not good enough. And, uh, and that was what they got this week. They got a very honest feedback on, on what we thought the performance was, was like. And uh, I think they understand that this is not a, they're not a bunch of kids. They knew it wasn't good enough. Uh, and I think they're eager to try to move on and, um, and write, write the ship and get another performance out. And so what is Bloom's injury again? It's been so long that I'm forgetting the, it was originally it was a leg, is it still? Yeah, it was a quad tear of sorts. Uh, and then the, re the comebacks were just, just setbacks from a similar injury. Um, but he's, uh, yeah, he's doing well, but it was, a, it was initially a quad tear.
And given Luke's family situation, is he okay? Sometimes it's tough to come back from something like that. Sometimes it's good to... Yeah, he, I, I think he's good. You know, I spoke to him today. He came back, um, I think, on Sunday. Uh, he was pleased that he could go home and be a part of uh, the ceremony, if you will, and to see all the people that were there supporting, you know, the family. And um, you know, he seemed he seemed like it was, a, it was a really positive thing for him to be able to go back and be a part of that. And uh, I suspect, as most of us players that we like to get back and do what we do, which is get back on the field and get back to, to life. And I'm sure, um, you know, the family member is close in his heart, but I think he's ready to, to get back to, to playing the game. And last time we saw Damien in New York City FC in the same neighborhood, he was kind of a crazy man. <laughs> do you think that uh, he's put that behind him? He was pretty incensed at the end of that game. He has. Uh, he has. And, and what I've learned about Damien is... Uh, in the heat of the moment, he can be very emotional. Uh, after he then settles down, then logic sort of comes into play, and he realizes uh, that he was a little bit incensed, and, and he, he makes peace with it, and he comes to grips with it, and he recognizes where he was. So I think as he goes into this game, he'll be a lot more aware of, uh, of his, his emotions, but also where, how the game may be played and how he can deal with that and prepare, with, prepare for it. And, uh, um, you know, that's kind of what I've seen from, from Damien. He can get really fired up, but he's also, at the end of it, he's a logical thinker and can recognize uh, good from bad, right from wrong. And how would you rate New York City FC? I mean, they seem to be coming on. Yeah, they're, they're a highly competitive group. I think they, uh, you know, they believe in, in what they're doing now, and they, they work hard. They are physical. Uh, they, you know, they're obviously adding some quality to their, their team, um, but it's... It's interesting because it's always when you add new players to a team, then you don't know exactly how the team's going to gel. I thought the group they had before was working very hard together, and they understood exactly what their roles were, and they were finding results. And you bring new players into the mix, um, you never know. We never know how that's going to impact in the short term. And there's been talk about MLS unbelievably tweaking its rules uh, again <laughs> to uh, accommodate another designated player. Have you heard anything about this? Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know. I can't say specifically that I know all of the nuances of the rule, but there is. Uh, there's been some adjustment that allows for um, for another additional player, but it has to be a player who fits into the cap. Uh, and then there's some supplementary money, core money that uh, can be used to to bring that player down into the cap space. I'm probably doing a terrible job. T Bez is the the master of of the cap, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an opportunity for teams to try to continue to improve their, their team. Uh, and the league wants to continue to improve and put a good product out. And this is uh, one way that they've seen as an opportunity of doing so. And with the window opening, I know it's not your bailiwick, you're concerned with what happens on the field, but you also talk to your general manager. Is, mm -hmm. there, is there room for you to, to make any moves? Uh, yeah, quite possibly. Well, uh, we, we have to go through a process of one, what is our space, and two, who are the right guys to add. As I've said for the last few weeks, is we don't want to add somebody as a knee jerk just to fill a hole right now. We want to add somebody who we think can help us at a minimum for the next 18 months, two years, whatever the case may be. As we try to build this team, we don't want to be reactive. Uh, so we'll we'll assess all those pieces. Tim is the master behind the. Uh, the cap and and he and I are discussing sort of what we feel are the needs for for our group to progress and and we'll see how those pieces fit together over the next couple of weeks. Is there anything imminent or no? Or this is just the discovery process still? I guess? Uh, nothing's imminent. I mean, we we have some some ideas uh, and and obviously some things have to come into play because we are you know in terms of our cap space we have to figure out exactly right. what we have available to us. Bright, he's available now. Bright is available now. Yeah, he was in training okay. today and he's available. So just going back to the core DP rule, does it, maybe you don't want to say, but does it sort of, uh, does it sort of anger you or, or uh, I mean, how do you feel about the league sort of introducing this rule midway through the season? Wouldn't it made more sense to do this beforehand, giving everyone sort of the opportunity to sort of plan? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a huge opinion. At this point, it's for us to figure out how we can benefit from it as every team now has you know the same luxury if you will to to figure out how it's going to impact their roster now for us is to sit down between myself and tim and uh, our scouting group is figure out how we can best utilize this uh you know this adaptation or new rules to to improve our team and uh if that makes sense right now or if that makes sense you know down the road so um in terms of my my opinions of it i don't I, i'm beyond them and i'm now trying to help our team get better